Hello, my friends. I always mute myself and forget. Um, how is everyone out there? I see you guys are already kind of live in the chat. So I'm hoping that you guys can hear me okay and everyone's doing all right. Um, I'm super excited about this webinar um, for everyone. You have no idea. I'm super excited about it. Um, and there's a little surprise for me tonight, so which includes a little surprise for you guys. Um, it's I literally 30 minutes, 30 minutes, no joke, before this webinar started, I got my repeat blood work, which I didn't think I was going to have today for you guys. Um, and I really wanted it back because I wanted to show you that what I have done has been working. And it's really hard to do that if I don't have if I don't have proof for you guys, right? So I really wanted I really wanted proof for you guys that that what I was doing was working, and that um, that it made a difference, and that I was getting better because my labs that I'm going to show you had a lot of atrocious numbers in them that were pretty scary, and it made me kind of jump and turn on a dime and really work on some things that you guys may be surprised about that changed my labs. Like you may actually be surprised about this. Um, I know I was surprised when I saw the results and I have continued to be surprised about what they mean and um, what has helped them the most. So I see you guys are kind of piling in right now. I want to give everyone a couple more minutes to join because this is a free webinar, right? Um, so you guys hop in the chat and just let me know where you're where you're at in the world the United States, um, where are you guys calling in from? Um, I always like to know where everyone's from. There's a slight delay here, you guys, I think. Oh, Texas. Perfect. I know everyone's moving to Austin. Kansas, love it. Connecticut, I was just there. New York, Boston, Illinois, awesome. Vancouver, love Vancouver. Love it. Amazing, you guys. Austin, Bay Area, Toronto, love it, love it. I'm really glad you guys could join. I'm really going to try to give you guys um, some nuggets to take home for you and your family members. And oh, Louisville, woo! -woo go cards um, for you guys to take back to your family members um, and loved ones and friends and all that stuff because I want you to not just know how to to um, I don't want me to just hand the fish to you I want you to be able to catch the fish yourself and what this webinar is going to do is teach you a lot about um, your body and what the labs mean and what you can do to change it so I'm going to be showing you guys um, a downloaded presentation just in parts from Wellness Plus because I have a, a one and a half hour course on how to read blood, blood work on Wellness Plus. So even when I forget maybe why some random lab number may be high or low, I can go back and check the research I did on that course um, to be sure that my assumptions are correct, right? Um, so, um, oh, let's see. Napa Valley guys. Awesome. So, so, you know, I really, um, am interested, um, to kind of just go into dive headfirst into this with you guys and show you, um, the reference guide on wellness plus as I go along with you. Um, and so I'm going to see here, make sure I can share my screen with you guys. Let's see. Entire screen. Perfect. Off without a hitch. All right, you guys. So this is my blood work. <laughs> and um, it's really atrocious at first. So everyone gasped. These are all the abnormal numbers. They're not the kind of blood panels put all together. So um, I want to preface this by saying that um, the last few months have been probably some of the hardest times in my life. I've definitely been in a dark night of the soul. And it's been, you know, um, really the last six or seven years back to back. I have hardly been able to catch my breath. And then I just went recently went through a really, really um, big breakup with someone of almost six years. So um, now I'm sort of, you can see this in the labs. 
And I'm going to go over each marker with you guys and show you um, what's going on here with everything. Okay. So this is done through Rupa Health. If you guys know Dr. Carrie Jones, I believe she um, is um, the CMO of Rupa Health and they do um, dropship labs. I work really closely with Vibrin as well, but my, I went to see my own doctor and this is what they wanted to order. You can get all this done on Vibrin on Wellness Plus, but you know, when you see your own doctor, you go with what they want to order. So I made sure with both lab tests that you can see that they were um, for, from Rupa Health. Um, so we can compare the access medical labs that I got done. It's not through two different labs. They're the same labs, so the same reference ranges, the same um, everything, right, that you have to look at. So it's not like I'm comparing lab core to this. So I want you guys to be aware of that. So first and foremost, the thing that's, that jumps out at you right here is look at this iron. It's very low. You know, the range should be, um, you know, at least 50 on the norm, in, low end of normal all the way up to 170. And um, so this is really important, right? Iron helps, um, you know, to make, um, to, to carry oxygen, right? And helps the hemoglobin. It helps, um, it, it really helps us generate energy and many other things in the body, right? Um, and so I haven't even been feeling fatigued. My body is a warrior genotype, so it protects me from feeling poorly. But with with all these labs, all I was feeling was really, really, really sad and depressed and quite irritable as well. So um, let me see here. Okay. All right. So this is, let's go to all markers here. So the iron here, so really low iron. Um, and when you look more at the complete blood count, you'll see like the MCH, right? That stands for mean corpuscular hemoglobin. And that's really the average amount of hemoglobin in each of your red blood cells. And so this is high, right? It's supposed to be 34 on the high end of normal. And so what you're seeing here so far, where's the other number I need to see? Now, vitamin B12. This looks like a vitamin B12 deficiency known as megaloblastic anemia. And why do I say that? I say that because I have low iron, which always indicates anemia, some form of anemia, right? So I have a high mean corpuscular volume. I also have, let me see if I can find this here. Uh, let's go up here and show you. I also have a high MCH, a high MCV, a high MPV, right? So mean corpuscular hemoglobin we looked at, MCV, mean corpuscular volume, right? That's the average size of the red blood cells. And then mean platelet volume, right, is about the measurement that gives us the size of your platelet. So all my red, my blood cells are a little off, right? Um, and this indicates when you see a high MCV, high MPV, a high MCH, this is a B12 and folate deficiency. And that causes a certain type of anemia, which you're seeing in the low iron. And this type of anemia is known as megaloblastic anemia. And so normally it makes your red blood cells bigger, and that's how they recognize it. And you can see mine were all high. So it makes it macrocytic. Macro is bigger, right? And this means that I didn't get enough oxygen to my body and tissues, right? And you can see here how serious this is. Megaloblastic anemia results from an inhibition of DNA synthesis during red blood cell production. That means that you can't really make red blood cells properly. Your bone marrow is struggling to make the cells properly. And this leads to severe fatigue. A big, thick tongue, pale tongue. Um, people also have a lot of brain fog and they have a lot of neuropsychiatric or depression symptoms. Now, when we got in here, I told you guys I didn't really feel a lot of fatigue, but I did feel sad and depressed, right? And so you can see here, neuropsychiatric disorders associated with B12 deficiency, right? Wow. And you can see here, it's interesting. It's a very well steeped in the science, you guys. This is like a board question for us doctors, really. So you can see it's a vital coenzyme in the synthesis of neurotransmitters. Wait a second here. That's what makes like the scaffolding of your personality and makes you feel good and helps you sleep at night and all that stuff, right? So most physicians can quickly pick up typical pernicious anemia, which is kind of where you can't absorb something in your gut and it leads to B12 deficiency, but it's really more rare. Um, but they miss this when it comes just with depression. They'll miss that it's a B12 deficiency and it was missed in me. And so I didn't want, I don't want it to be missed in any of you guys, right? 
So the, even here, the author presents his own experience of neuropsychiatric disorder. His presented his anxiety related to B12 deficiency. And that is exactly what I was experiencing. Everyone in my life noticed. It wasn't just my family. It was my coworkers, my business partner, my ex, right? It affected every area of my life, okay? So I don't want the, you guys to miss this. It's very important, all right? So back to the labs really quick. So this is starting to look like, hmm, this is a B12 deficiency. But wait a second, Dr. Jess, we just looked at the B12 and it says above optimal, right? So here from 455 to 911, there's a big wide window, window there. They say that's above optimal. To me, um, you know, that's optimal. But why would that be? Why would my labs be showing indirectly a B12 and folate deficiency, but when they actually measure the B12, it's high? And this actually confused the first doctor I saw. He actually brought up the word cancer to me and scared me to death, okay? But what I want to show you is with this is inaccurate. And I'm going to prove it to you guys, okay? Let me find it real quick. Okay. Normal or high serum, normal or high serum B12 levels can sometimes be seen in a B12 deficient state and therefore be misleading. High levels of MMA, MMA is a urine marker, and homocysteine, which is a marker of nonspecific inflammation, and you guys are going to see that later. They have been identified as a better indicator of B12 deficiency. So when you have a B12 deficiency, you have a lot of inflammation in your body. And one of the markers of inflammation is homocysteine, which is a marker that usually indicates cardiac issues. Okay. So that's just really interesting, right? Um, so you can see I am the classic case of this in my labs. I have a normal, above normal B12, and then everything else shows that I'm not absorbing it properly. So unfortunately, I don't have a urine MMA lab to show you guys, but I can almost guarantee that would be low, right? Um, and show that, or high, show that I'm peeing it out and not absorbing it, right? So this is, this is, shows a severe longstanding B12 and folate deficiency for me to be honest with you. Um, and so that's a problem, right? So here's the other thing that we see in the abnormal labs. Look at this, high sensitivity CRP. Now CRP stands for C-reactive protein. That's another like kind of partner lab that goes with um, homocysteine to show inflammation. And look how high mine is. It's supposed to be less than three, you guys. Yikes, and mine's off the charts at 7.8. I had zero pain in my body zero. But you know, I had a, what it felt like neuroinflammation. I was irritated all the time and super anxious and I couldn't figure out why it just felt free floating. And if you have inflammation in your body, I can almost guarantee you you're going to have inflammation in your brain. It's just a thing you guys, especially if you have bloating, got the gut brain axis in a second. So this was really affecting my mood, right? We'll get to this in a minute. They also did a hormone panel on me. This is um, insulin growth factor. This is very low. We really want this around 120. Um, and this indicates um, that my hypothalamus, a part in my brain, is not making um, human growth hormone very well, which contributes to making hormones and neurotransmitters. Okay. Let's go down some more here. Here, my creatinine is high. This is a measurement of um, kidney function, you guys. And we really want it less than one. So it's starting to look a little bit like I might be dehydrated here too, right? Another clue is my albumin is high. This is a measurement of how well fed you are or how nourished, I should say. That's a better way of saying it. 4.8 is normal and I'm only five, but it's high when you're dehydrated. And these two are both high, which indicates that I'm likely dehydrated here as well, which throws a wrench in the labs and confuse the first practitioner. Okay. Let's see here. I kind of want to go over. We're going to go over all this with you guys. So, okay. So this is getting into a lot of, um, and I want to just show you how I can find some of this stuff here. This is, this is from Wellness Plus. I have a whole live professionally edited course on this, but we also have a downloadable presentation that you can go through, right? So you can see MPV here was high in me. Hi, birth control pills, B12 deficiency, cancer, stress. What did I tell you guys? Most stressful time in my life, right? Stress. High hemoglobin, dehydration, polycythemia vera, which was also brought up to me, okay? Um, cancer, heart failure, right? 
altitude, some respiratory disorders. So I can come over here just like you guys can. Anyone can do this and triage their health based on what this says. Isn't that pretty cool? So you can, this is like a quick guide so you don't have to go all the way through the course again. You can see my MCH was high, right? My MCV was high. Megoblastic anemia, need for B12 and folate. That's the only reason that MCV is high. It's, this is a board question for doctors, okay? So it's really nice to come over here and check this, okay? You can see here in my, um, this is a lot of my, um, this is a reverse T3. This is part of your thyroid panel. Now look how high that is. 25 would be high. I'm at 24.5. That's due to stress, okay? So I'm starting to see stress in my labs too. So far we're seeing dehydration, a vitamin deficiency, and stress in the labs. And I wanted to show you guys, you know, everyone just downplays the heck out of stress. And I wanted to show you guys what stress can do in the labs. And this is what it can do. You're seeing it. We caught it in a screenshot in my labs. And I was at a whole time to stress mentally during this time because I was reeling from that vitamin deficiency, right? Come over here and check on you guys real quick. Okay. Yes, and stress will burn through our B12. I'm also going to talk to you guys about infections because of what this panel did for me was prompted me to get a Lyme panel. And because some of these labs, you know what else can cause some of this? Blood parasites. So you also want to make, I also want to rule out that. So I've got a Tickborn 2.0 panel from um, Vibrant on the way. Unfortunately, I don't have it yet. So I'm going to have another webinar with you guys to go over that blood work. Okay. When it comes in, um, HDL is below normal. This can also be caused from stress. Now I want this above 50. Normally this isn't terrible, but I want this above 50 and mine's you normally been higher. And this is likely due to stress, which can lower this free T3. I usually like between three and four, honestly, they can say 3.3 here. So everyone's just a little bit different on their reference ranges. Um, and this can be that I'm not converting free T4 over to free T3 because I'm having liver issues. Stress can do that as well right? Fasting insulin is below optimal, right? I'm probably not eating very much because I'm super stressed out, right? Potassium, you're going to burn through minerals like potassium when you're also stressed out. That's a good reason, but we can come over here and let's check it out and see, right? Let's see if I'm right. Potassium, diuretics. I'm not on any diuretics, not in any drugs like antibiotics. I don't drink alcohol and have it for a while. Chronic kidney disease. I did have a high creatinine a little bit. So let's see. Sweating or diarrhea. Folate deficiency. What? There it is again, you guys. So that can also contribute to why I might have a low potassium, right? We already talked about the B12. I needed a urine MMA to make sure that I was absorbing this. And it doesn't look like inflammation will also stop you from absorbing this. Stress will leak your vitamins, as someone mentioned in the chat. Um, so will infections. They will eat away your vitamin D and a lot of your minerals as well. Now, you can see my cortisol was, this was taken about 11 a.m., you guys. So this is on the high end of normal for in the morning. I, blood cortisol is not the most accurate way to check cortisol. To be honest with you, I'd much prefer saliva. And it, was, it wasn't done that way. So it's really hard to kind of trend this out and compare here. As you get into more of my, um, we'll talk about this, this very low end of normal on my testosterone. What I want you guys to remember about my hormones here is look at this. They're, they're a dumpster fire. <laughs> they're garbage. Like, look, 0.2 after that, it's low. I mean, it's like zero libido. You know, I should have zero energy, but I didn't feel it. So the, why is my testosterone low? You know, I'm 45 now. Am I going into menopause? Do I want to believe that? What will happen if you have vitamin and mineral deficiencies? What will happen with your hormones? They're going to tank you guys. You want to go into early menopause, have no mitochondrial reserve, and have no minerals and vitamins. And if you don't have B12 or B complex, and all the B vitamins, B5, B6, all these are extremely important for hormone neurotransmitter synthesis. If you don't have those, your skin is going to age. You're going to feel depressed and sad. You're not going to be able to lose weight and detox. There's going to be so many different things that happen, and your, your hormones are going to fall, okay? You're going to feel super stressed, like just like I did. My glucose is surprisingly normal. Sometimes glucose and insulin can be high if you're in a level of stress and inflammation. I was fasting this morning as well. Ferritin, right? Ferritin is a storage of iron. So although my iron was low, um, 
although my lime was low or my um although my iron was low my ferritin so the storage of iron had not been eaten into yet but it is on the kind of low end of normal you see this big range 7.3 to 270 mine is still on the low end of normal so i'm not storing a lot of iron despite having that low level as you can see right my red dis cell distribution width is okay actually low end of normal let's go back and check over here what this means rdw where are you whoops i think i missed it um here we go low acute blood loss and stress right so there you go again stress you're seeing this in the labs again this is my liver alt is one of the amino transferases right um so ALT is, um, is good in my liver, right? This is another blood that's good. My vitamin E, you guys, they say optimal. I sorely disagree. 36 is not optimal. You really want 50 to 80 in my opinion. And some people would even say higher than that. I say 50 to 80. So this is really low. This also will affect everything, your body hormone synthesis, your mood, so many different things. So I'm going to tell you what I did to, when you see my new labs, you guys will be like, okay, I get it now, right? Folate, again, it says normal here, right? Right, almost smack dab in the middle. Again, without proper um, urine tests, it's hard to know how accurate that is, right? I definitely was not feeling that way, and I'm going to tell you guys a little bit later. So um, TIBC, total iron binding capacity, this is how tightly um, that the iron um, is bound in your blood. Um, and the amount of blood your iron can, your amount of iron your blood can carry as well. So mine's normal here, thank goodness. Nothing wrong with that. Um, total cholesterol. So you guys saw that my um, HDL was a little bit low. The good cholesterol. This is the normal cholesterol. My free T4 is okay. It's not converting over to free T3 optimally, as you guys saw, but that's okay. I really would like this more like 1.2 to 1.6, but that's okay. That's ideal, 1.2 to 1.6. Hemoglobin A1C is a three-month measurement of blood sugars, okay? Um, and we want this above 5.5 or so would be considered above optimal. This is actually really good. And this is great because this is a measurement of inflammation as well. Diabetes is a very inflammatory condition, as many of you guys know. My TSH is great. <laughs> No problem there, right? Thyroid stimulating hormone is okay, but as many of you guys know, this is just one little piece of the puzzle. Without the other ones, we really don't know how the thyroid's performing. Triglycerides, another measure of inflammation in the body. This is actually really good. Really good. This is a fat in your blood, right? So really great there. Sodium, okay. And most of the time, sodium is okay in the body unless you're really, really, really dehydrated. So despite looking somewhat dehydrated and inflamed in my labs, my sodium is still normal, even though the potassium was subpar. Total protein. So this is the proteins in your blood. This is kind of like albumin. If it's high, it can mean dehydration. It can also mean a high protein diet. But let's go over here and say, see what I said on Wellness Plus, right? Let's see if I'm right. It's kind of fun to check yourself sometimes. Total protein, high, high protein diet, kidney disease, dehydration, acute infection, and cancer. So you can see there's a lot of acute infections in here, which prompted me to get more of an acute infection panel. Albumin, that was high too. High protein diet again, dehydration again, kidney or liver, heart disease, cancer or severe infections, same kind of thing, right? So both those two kind of indicating something else, right? Chloride was normal. There's my albumin that I showed, tell, just said was high. This is alkaline phosphatase, right? So this is actually pretty high, you guys. 84 is pretty high. And this worried me. This is another reason the doctor said cancer. Oftentimes, bone cancer presents with a high alkaline phosphatase. So um, so that's that was a little worrisome, right? Let's go over here and see what, what Wellness Plus says about a high alkaline phosphatase. High liver disease, inflammation. We've already seen my inflammation in the CRP was off the charts. High bilirubin, bone disease or cancer, pregnancy, certain drugs like seizure meds, antibiotics, and blood pressure medications, right? So interesting. Again, looking like it could be inflammation, right? 
total protein we talked about bilirubin a below norm optimal here kind of low which you know there's also reasons for below below optimal ranges too right bilirubin low caffeine i do have you know mold free organic coffee every morning with mushrooms NSAIDs, I don't take any of that. Barbiturate drugs, no thanks. So that's interesting, right? Um, and then AST, this is above optimal. This is a, you guys, this is one of my liver um, amino transferases again. And it's not too, too high. It's just barely there. But this is, stress can cause this. You could, stress will cause um, manifestations in every organ not just in the ones you think like the heart sometimes we think of that or a blood pressure but it what we're seeing here is stress in all of my organs based on my thinking my mindset and my you know just happens to be my lifestyle at the time that i couldn't help right just life events so um that's really interesting that you can see this here it also can be high because of tick-borne illnesses right so if you go over here let's look at ast high stagnant liver pathway fatty liver disease whoops alcohol use which i don't drink acute tick associated illness hepatitis recent surgery stress right Mo in, uh, even mono or ebv or cmv so infections can do this too ALT was normal. The way you guys, these are both liver enzymes. So the way you guys can remember this, one of them is more specific if someone drinks. So AST is more specific if someone drinks. You'll always see this one higher. Just remember the S stands for scotch. <laughs> That's how we remember. We had all these little clues in medical school to remember all this stuff. What's interesting is you guys saw my creatinine, which is a byproduct of um, the body that your kidneys want to get rid of. It was a, a 0.1 higher than it should have been. The BUN stands for blood re urea nitrogen. So it's byproducts that, that also the body wants to get rid of. You can see, however, that it is normal. It is not high. And this is most of the time high if someone is dehydrated as well. So it's interesting that my creatinine was high, but my BUN is not. Fasting insulin was below optimal, wasn't eating like we said. Now we're going to get into some of the adrenal stuff and different hormones with the thyroid and reproductive systems. So this is, remember the adrenals, the thyroid, and the reproductive systems, they all form kind of like a stool with three legs. So all of them affect each other. So if you see irregularities in one, you're likely going to see irregularities in the, in the other ones that are connected as well. I'm just checking in on you guys. Okay, great. Just making sure you guys don't have questions or that I'm ignoring by accident. Okay. Um, we talked about my cortisol. I took this around 11 a.m. Um, again, they're not going to give you reference ranges here, but this was on kind of the high end of normal. But again, not the accurate way to measure cortisol. You really want it in the saliva. DHEA, this is made um, by the adrenals, <laughs> right? And they sit right above the kidneys. DHEA is a precursor to testosterone. It also, if you have too much of it, it can cause male pattern baldness because it converts over to DHT. It can also cause chin hairs and PCOS-like symptoms for women if it's too high. Um, oftentimes, because it's a stress hormone, because it comes from the adrenal glands, it will be high when there's levels of stress. So what's interesting is I still have normal cycles, but what you guys are going to see in these labs is that my doctor was like, you're in menopause you're in menopause based on these labs. And I was like, I'm still having cycles every month. And he's like, I think what's going on is you still have a pretty robust DHEA. So that's keeping your, your, your hormones online. It's your adrenals that are pumping this out. Right. So I don't know if I necessarily agree with that. That could be true. Um, but this has definitely kept me from being tired, I think. Right. We talked about my reverse T3 in the thyroid. This is due, due, this is due to stress. So let me find this real quick for you guys. Let's see here, thyroid. Reverse T3, stress. <laughs> so you're seeing stress again presenting in the labs here. I'm gonna teach you guys if you're stressed out how you see it, right? Free T3, we really want this between, this is 3.3 .3 and higher. I usually say three to four based on lab cores re reference range. So again, my, my free T T4 is not converting over to my free T3 very well. That could be due to a sluggish liver. That could also be due to stress. But let's check over here and see what they say. See what I say, excuse me. <laughs> Graves, mold, over-medicated stealth pathogens, chlorine byproducts in the water, heavy metals, not speaking your truth, 
iodine requirement, cancer, right? For high, low, Hashimoto's, this is me when I was low, conversion issue in liver, stealth pathogens, chlorine byproducts in, lot, in water, heavy metals, not speaking your truth again, mitochondrial and cortisol issues. So even though I spelled mitochondrial wrong, that's okay. <laughs> This is going to show you that when you have a B vitamin deficiency or a um, vitamin D deficiency, you're going to have mitochondrial issues. So they use that as cofactors in the Krebs cycle and in the to make energy in ATP. So you're going to eventually have problems with your DNA synthesis and problems with making energy. If you have problems um, with or deficiency in B vitamins or vitamin D or zinc or any of those things, right? Thank goodness thyroid antibodies are normal. TSH looks great. Here's my here's my reproductive system, right? You guys are going to see a sex hormone binding globulin that's high if you've been on birth control. Sometimes even after birth control, it will stay elevated. Sadly, they don't give us a reference range here, but I'm fairly certain that's normal. Free testosterone, low end of normal. Garbage. LH. So I'm sad they don't give us reference ranges here, but basically this LH, if it's above like, you know, I think it was like 15, it says you're in menopause. LH comes from the brain, and what it does is it signals progesterone formation. So LH forms progesterone. FSH comes from the brain, and it comes from the part of the brain and tells the ovaries to make estrogen. So this is actually high too. It's, this should be, I think, um, I don't remember, around 50 or so. Depending on where you are in your follicular or luteal phase, ladies, this will range, but this was higher than what it should have been, both of these. And why are they high? They go high because it's a feedback loop. So if your progesterone and estrogen are falling, then it sends this feedback signal to your brain to go, yo, your estrogen and progesterone are falling. You want to do something about this? And so they start to raise LH and say, okay, make more progesterone, raise FSH. Okay, make, make more estrogen. But your, your ovaries are not able to. Um, you can see my progesterone sucks. 0.36 sucks. My E2, 14.1 sucks. Sucks. Like I should be having hot flashes with this. My total testosterone is normal. It's on the low end of normal. Um, what matters is free testosterone. This is what's active in the body. This is what's bound up by protein so you don't feel the, all of this. You only feel the free testosterone. We talked about DHEA, which converts over to testosterone. So guys, why would my hormones be low? You need B vitamins. You need B5 and B6 and B12 to make DNA, to make mitochondria. You know how many mitochondria in your oocytes and ovaries? It is ridiculous. Guys, it is ridiculous. So if your mitochondrial reserve is sucks because you don't have B vitamins, your hormones and you are going to fall, you're going to go into early menopause. Okay? Um, so, so that is really, really, really... Um, really, really important for you guys to understand that these are necessary cofactors in vitamins and minerals and making hormones. Okay. What you don't see here is through another lab, I got an anti-mullerian hormone or AMH. Why you guys need to know about an AMH, if you're on your fertility journey at all, this will be important for you. An AMH shows you the quality and how many eggs you're making um, each month. And so the first time they checked it, mine was 0.09. Point one is considered um, menopause. So I was basically in menopause based on my AMH as well, but still having cycles. And I actually got pregnant last year and miscarried. So it can happen, right? So don't just look at these numbers because what I'm going to show you in a little bit is how things have slightly improved because I've improved my vitamin levels. And that's going to be important for you guys to see. We talked about a lot of this stuff, right? This is, again, from the B12 and folate deficiency. This is megaloblastic anemia. Again, we talked about this. That's what this is, right? So you can see, you know, and this is due to stress. This is what this is due, stress and maybe infection. So, whoops, sorry, guys. And then we're going to go into my CBC and differential, which shows you the white blood cells and what type of white blood cells and how many of them you have. Lymphocytes fight viruses. So 2.8, you know, up a little slightly above optimal. There could be something viral going on. I was just getting over a cold when these labs were drawn, like a little slight, like 24-hour upper respiratory infection. So that could be just seeing the, slight, the tail end of that. 
above optimal. Basophils are um, really, really a type of white blood cell that is, you don't see them very often. They're quite rare. We used to get like prizes in histology if we could find them on the on the slide because they were so hard to find. And they fight a lot of different unusual infections. But if I wanted to go back and show you guys really quick. Oops. Uh, here we go. Basophils. So if they're high or low, they're saying minor high. So sometimes there can be reasons for that. Parasites are one of them, right? Allergies. There being lots of different infections can cause it too. So my white blood cell count was a slightly above normal, just slightly, but that is um, oftentimes due to an acute infection or whatever's going on there. Again, my lymphocyte percentage is high. You can see both these are correlating together. My eosinophils are normal. This is a very um, specific number for um, parasites and allergies especially, but mostly parasites with eosinophils. We talked about a lot of this stuff. These, the neutrophils fight bacteria a lot of times, right? Reticulocyte count is making sure your red blood cells aren't being destroyed. Platelets are the clotting factors that clot your blood if you cut yourself, right? Monocytes fight atypical infections, oftentimes involved with parasites as well. So we talked about a lot of this other stuff. This is just kind of a review. I want you to know my calcium is normal here, right? And then I don't know if it showed, I showed you the vitamin D yet. There's that high res CRP, that inflammation is off the charts. That thing honestly scared me the most. I was like, why is my body not giving me that I have any inflammation I didn't even know? Um, and this is also affecting the hormones, right? And this is a lot from mindset, a lot, a lot, a lot from mindset. Okay. Um, I don't see my vitamin. Oh yes, we did see my vitamin D. It was like 36. Okay. So these are my labs, you guys. Does anyone have any questions about these specifically right now? Um, about these. Oh, thank you for giving me the, S the sex hormone binding range. So my, I was on birth control for 12 years of my life. So it's not surprising that mine was 90, right? Like I mentioned, a lot of people on birth control never lower their sex hormone binding globulin. And uh, stress can also raise that as well. Okay. No, high reverse T3 is normally stress for me. Um, but we can go back and look here. Um, and this is, you guys, we have so much information on Wellness Plus. This is just one example of one of our courses. We have tons of courses and protocols. So reverse T3, if it's high, birth control pills, poor diet, youth thyroid 6 syndrome, iron deficiency, aging, leave it the roxine, liver stagnation. If you're not eating, excessive sauna use, you guys, back off the killbind sweat so, so much. <laughs> Okay. Um, so these are, this is all the labs. Do you guys have questions? Let's see. I have low fibrinogen activity. What does that mean? So that fibrinogen is part of the clotting cascade. Um, so that's going to affect your, your clotting ability likely. I mean, you probably have other factors that make up for that. So it may be something you never notice. Is low hemoglobin something to worry about? I think that's what, yes, to worry about. So yeah, it depends on how low. Sometimes if it slowly falls, the body can acclimate and you won't even know that you've had low hemoglobin. If you lose it quickly, it will cause fatigue and, and eventually loss of consciousness, right? So yeah, that's your oxygen carrying capacity. So that will cause some fatigue for people, some, um, some um, pallor or pale skin sometimes, right? Sometimes, yeah. Okay, I'm going to move on then if there aren't any questions. Are ketones 2 plus worrisome? So yes, they can be. Oftentimes that means you're spilling, um, you know, um, blood sugar into the urine as well, you know, or you're in a ketotic state. It's a, if, you're, if you're fasting on purpose, it's okay. But if, it's, if you're not doing it on purpose, it would be a little worrisome. Would acute liver issues affect AST and ALT or elevated more? So due to chronic issues, oh no, acute liver issues would definitely elevate both those two for sure. Absolutely. What would you say ideal ferritin is? Mine has been dropping. I have good hemoglobin and good hematocrit. Well, I'd ask what your iron is. You need your iron and transferrin levels as well. But yes, that's your storage of iron. Yeah. Yes, a, a cracked tongue and a swollen tongue are indications of a B12 deficiency, a big tongue in your mouth. 
Like sometimes it feels like it doesn't even fit in your mouth. <laughs> okay. So let's move on, you guys. I literally just got these labs 30 minutes before you guys. These are the only abnormals. Say what? And I want you to look. I had eaten breakfast that day. I went at like 1 or 2 p.m. So I'd already eaten breakfast that day. That's why this is high. I had a smoothie in hand, actually. The MCH. Normal is 34. I'm 34.8. Remember, this is from B12 and folate deficiency. Now, these labs were taken... Collected fasted November 8th. These labs were taken November 27th. What did I do in between now and then? Hold on, guys. I'm going to just talk to you for just a second. Um, what did I do in between then, now and then? I stopped freaking out about my ex and I stopped. Um, I kind of just kind of surrendered more and let be what it was, right? Like it just wasn't meant to be. And I just had to let it go and just be like, the universe has to get me. I can't, so I can't keep freaking out about things I can't change and weren't working. Right. I, um, I went to Joe Dispenza's week long meditation retreat and that made a huge difference for me. Huge. Um, and I can't tell you how much that meditation, it makes me cry even talking about it. Like he showed so many science back studies about people with cancer, about people, um, with PTSD, about people with, um, psychiatric conditions, about people with autoimmunity and how they'd healed at a week long retreat. It was better than any medication. And these are studies being done at like UCSD, you know, um, not just some rinky dink anywhere. And there were scientists and PhDs on the stage showing us the studies and we weren't allowed to take pictures because they weren't quite published yet but like amazing things that all of you guys should know about. And so I went there and I spent four or five hours a day with one of my good friends, Jill in meditation and had mystical experiences and brought my collapsed time space function and brought and manifested my life to me. And he proved God through science. He did. The science was amazing. It was mind blowing quantum physics and it was just beautiful spirit science. And I just fell in love with it and it changed me. And what you're seeing in my labs the second time around, let me share again. I wanted you guys to see my face to say how much important meditation is and getting into parasympathetic mode and stopping. You don't always have to be looking at your phone and scrolling. You don't always have to be doing something. You need to sit still and process your emotions. There are some people I'm talking to that I know very well on this, on this live. I'm talking to you guys right now, but everyone needs to slow down and be a human being sometimes because that is what has healed me in these labs. Okay. You guys saw stress, you saw dehydration, you saw vitamin deficiencies besides getting in, going into the week long retreat and meditation and just doing th hard, things that are hard that you don't want to do. Um, I also started getting Myers cocktails and I've gotten two. And I, I, I've only gotten one in between these two labs. I got one the other day after these labs were drawn. So you're only seeing one vitamin IV in these labs. But I got eight grams of vitamin C. I got a 50,000 IU shot in my butt of vitamin D. I got, this was the day before Thanksgiving. I got a B complex with methylated B vitamins and folate. A whole B complex, of B2, B1 all the way to B12, right? I got um, selenium, copper, magnesium, minerals like that, and then they did a glutathione push. And on Thanksgiving, I threw up and had a splitting migraine because I was herxing so bad. But it was like a physical and emotional and spiritual flu because the next day, what that did was it made me absorb the B12. I didn't have to get it from my gut. I could get it straight in through a vein, and it did its magic, and I had my brain back. And I could let go and surrender of my ex. I could, um, think straight and my depression was gone. It was like going from like black and white Pleasantville to a colored sky. And, um, my friends could instantly tell a difference in me. Um, it was amazing. Right. Um, so for vitamin D, you guys want usually around, I like it 50 to 80, um, honestly. And so Jolene, I would suggest you to get a, a B12, injection because that will de when you have vitamin deficiencies and stress, it creates inflammation you can't absorb from your gut. So getting it through a vein bypasses that inflamed gut and lets you get kind of get balance out. And then you can start to absorb from the gut once you get to a place of, of, of resiliency and homeostasis, right? I'm new to your site. If I join Wellness Plus, 
do you recommend which labs to use? Where do I go to get the blood work done? Yes, we absolutely have blood work and panels on Wellness Plus, and we have them attached to different protocols. So if you know what you're dealing with and everyone starts with drainage on Wellness Plus because it prevents I did a, a hella job on myself the day before Thanksgiving. Like I hurt so bad and I knew I could handle it and then I was better. But a lot of you guys don't have the same body type and you're different than me. So I want to be gentle with you. So I start everyone with drainage and then we go from there and we have every test laid out under the protocol for you guys. And in fact, if you look at the sidebar here, we're going to have some, a blood work from um, our trusted partners on, on um, right there for you. So you can see the blood work panel that we recommend so you can get the same blood work. Okay. So MC, MCH is much better. It was 35 something before it's, you can see it's going down, even though it's still high hemoglobin is 15.2 is high. I'm 15.5. It was 16 before. So this is also coming down. Okay. Amazing. Right. I don't want to have polycythemia there or cancer. So this is great. So let's go over this. Remember, this is only high because I had a smoothie with me. This is coming down. They didn't get a home assist team before we did this time. hi yi yi That's high. And I guarantee it was higher before because when you have a B12 deficiency and a folate deficiency, it shoots your home assist team up. Like it says, common substance in your body plays a role in building proteins. So all the different blood and red blood cells I have are proteins that can't be synthesized because DNA synthesis is being stopped because it needs B12 to do DNA synthesis to make red blood cells and proteins. So, hemo so homocysteine shoots up. It's this really inflammatory marker that often um, that often indicates cardiac inflammation, right? So this change involves a series of chemical reactions that need B vitamins, specifically B6, B9, which is folate, and B12, right? So this is what my body is showing me despite saying above normal. Remember, this was 522 before. It's only 528, still above optimal, but dang. This is showing me it was not being absorbed. Do you guys understand? Perfect. Potassium still below normal. This 3.9 before below optimal, excuse me. This isn't too, too low. We used to see this all the time in the hospital. <laughs> Creatinine is now normal. It was 1.1 before. It's normal. Remember I got that vitamin IV just maybe like four days before these labs. Albumin is now normal. Again, probably from dehydration, these two. Ferritin was always normal. This was always normal. My red cell distribution width was always normal. Look at my iron, you guys. Iron. Look at my iron. What? This is literally not even a month apart. So I want to show you how quickly you can correct things. This is through meditation. This is through getting a vitamin C IV because you need vitamin C to make iron. This is from decreasing my inflammation and getting B12 and all the B vitamins that you need to get rid of that megoblastic anemia. Or It's not from iron deficiency, right? It's from a vitamin deficiency. And it corrected like, bam, as soon as I got that vitamin IV in me. Total iron binding capacity was always normal, but it's a little bit better here. ALT, remember this is a liver enzyme. Looks good. Folate looks good, right? Looks good. Total protein is still a little high. It was 7.7 .7 before. So, you know, 6.9 is above optimal. So still a little high, and that could be from a high-protein diet. It could also be still be from dehydration. Again, I said this was 522 before, I believe. Let's scroll down and look here. Yeah, 522. So still above optimal, hopefully now being absorbed into my body right? Chloride, okay. Total bilirubin was actually below optimal. Now it's above optimal. 0.7 is above optimal. Bilirubin can be caused by, this is, can be caused by a blockage in liver, stagnant liver, and there's a lot of different things that can do this, but you're going to see in here that I have some liver stuff going on. This was 20 before and it was above optimal before too. Another liver enzyme. This is due to stress. It can also be due to tick-borne illnesses, which prompted my Lyme panel that I ordered, right? this kind of stuff. This before, what was my alkaline phosphatase? It was not good. I know that because <laughs> that was a the reason they said cancer, 84. Now it is 69. So we're on the way down. 
So what I did, look at all the stress that did this, you guys. But let's go back to Wellness Plus. Alkaline phosphatase, high, inflammation, liver disease, cancer, not on any drugs, right? So this is likely inflammation because it's coming down. You see all this inflammation in my labs? Scare the heck out of you and confuse all your doctors, make them think you have cancer. That's what happened to me. Here's an AMH. We checked it here this time. Anti-malarian hormone. Now they say normal. It's not really normal. They say it's really low. You see that? Like what was it before? Before it was 0 0.09. That's less than a month. That's from B vitamin deficiency and not being able to make hormones. I want you guys to look. This indicates fertility. If you guys want to freeze eggs, they're only going to look at this number. If you guys are going to have fertility, they're going to look at this. This is improving based on a vitamin deficiency. So don't let anyone tell you you're infertile until you know for sure. Okay? Hemoglobin MCH, again, there's barely, ten, not even a tenth high I'm coming down. We went over all this, right? Basophil count, they didn't find a one this time, so they read it as low. <laughs> That's okay. You can see, again, my white blood cell count is high and even higher than it was last time. Although eight is not too, too bad. It was seven something before. My lymphocyte count is still high, right? Still something going on there with virus, looks like, looks like possibly. And then everything else is corrected. Look at that, you guys. This time my calcium is high. I want, does anyone know why this might be high? Any of you guys, those smarties out there know? Did I not share you guys? Oh, no, I didn't share the screen with you guys. Oh, no, I'm so sorry, you guys. How annoying. I'm so sorry I've been doing this whole thing with you guys and not sharing it, it with you guys at all. Okay. I'm so mad at myself. So there you go, you guys. Go homocysteine. Everything's normal, you guys. Everything is corrected at this point. Everyone can see now, hopefully. Sorry, you guys. We're going to go back down. I'm going to show you guys because I know you still have questions. So total bilirubin, this one was actually below normal before. Now it's above normal. This ALP was 80 something before. It's 69 now. This is a measure of inflammation, but also prompted my daughter, my doctors to look for um, cancer. That's alkaline phosphatase. It can indicate bone cancer, but also inflammation in the body. So now that it's down from 80 something, this is literally just indicating inflammation. Total protein was 7.7. .7. Now it's down to 7.3. This can be a high protein diet or dehydration. BUN and creatinine are back to normal. That's my kidney function. Here in the liver, this is AST. Remember, AS stands for scotch, so usually this is the one due to drinking that's high, but not in me. This was due to inflammation. So this is what also prompted my Lyme test because tick-borne illnesses can get in the liver and cause increased liver enzymes. So um, this, these two are what prompted my, my line panel that's still pending. Albumin is back to normal now that I'm more, more rehydrated, right? My other lim liver enzyme is normal. This is the one, anti-malarian hormone. Now, we didn't have it on. I got it checked through a different lab um, at my OBGYN before. This time I had the doctor just check it here instead of going back to the OBGYN. Before it was 0 0.09. And that indicates menopause. You guys can see how low that is here on the low end of normal. It's still low, but it's 0.17. And that's due to a B vitamin deficiency and vitamin D deficiency. That's what this is from. Right? So this is improving. When you see this improve, you'll expect the quality of your eggs and how many eggs you're producing to improve. And I expect that um, my hormones will be improving too because they need B vitamins to make hormones. So MCH is just, you know, 34 is normal, 0.8 high. Hemoglobin, 15.2 is normal, barely high. This is much improved from the last labs. They didn't find any basophils, like I said, so these, that's why they read that as below optimal. Um, all this is improving, right? This was high before. Again, my white blood cell count, it was 7 before, so again, above optimal at 8 something, 8.9. Um, so it looks like I'm fighting something that could be viral because the lymphocytes are slightly elevated again. And what I'll show you guys is on my neural zoomer, um, I have an active Epstein-Barr infection in the brain, and that's what is going on here, most likely. 
But look at that, you guys. Everything else is corrected. That iron is normal. Look at that. It was 24 before. It's 80 now. Vitamin C and B vitamins corrected that. So, okay, here. Anybody know why the calcium is high here? It was normal before. It's barely high. It's above optimal, right? So 9.9 .9 is normal. This is because, let me see here. Yes, I, absolutely, Sarah. Very good. Sarah gets a gold star. That was amazing. I love that you knew that. Yes, it is high because I got it the 50,000 IU vitamin D injection. So that's what drove this up. This is not, this can also be high due to dehydration, but this is slightly high due to that. I got enough vitamin D, you guys. That's what that tells me right there. Okay. This is due to stress, like we mentioned, but it's coming down. Likely due to stress, 3.9 before. And I'm just kind of watching the liver enzymes right now. They're not horrible, but I'm just kind of watching them to make sure they're stressed too. And um, that my lime panel is normal. Isn't that crazy, you guys? So just meditating. Just meditating and um, doing all this is what corrected that. Look at that, res look at that you guys. That was 7.8. <laughs> Look at that inflammation. Look what meditation did. That is meditation in less than a month. That's wild. That's wild. And this was 80 before, right? This alkaline phosphatase. So all due to inflammation. So I wanted to show you guys this blood work because it's amazing. It's amazing that this was corrected that quickly from two vitamin IVs in a week long meditation in less than a month. And so I really wanted to just kind of like, um, really go over how much that's important and have you guys understand that taking methylated B vitamins, some of you guys can't take methylated, it gives you anxiety, but there's a good non-methyl B out there for you that uses adenosyl or hydroxy, not cyanocobalamin, not the synthetic form. So, so you guys can see how the stress manifested physically in my labs. I felt awful. I felt depressed. Therefore, while I was suicidal, I didn't feel like myself. I felt, I had brain inflammation. I could feel it. And I was super irritated at everyone. It's like I was reactive. I couldn't control my emotions. There was no emotional regulation. I felt victimhood the, all the time and sorry for myself. And so these labs are showing you a physical manifestation of how I felt. So many of you guys feel it in your body. I feel it in my emotions. And so regardless of how your body perceives pain, it's still reflected within the labs, right? I'm going to answer some of your guys' questions now really quick. Let's see. I have chronically low calcium. I tried supplements, and on the last urinalysis, I got calcium oxalate crystals. Oh, no. What would you suggest? How to raise calcium without getting calcium oxalate crystals? So, um... So calcium oxalate is usually due to, um, it can be due to diet, things like kale and spinach and lots of the veggies unfortunately make you produce oxalates. Um, it can also be due to candida or living in a water damaged building with mold. Those will make you form kidney stones. The most common kidney stone is calcium oxalate. And so that could be a root cause is water damage in your home or fungus in your body. Um, or candida in your body, both of those produce oxalate as a byproduct. And on the oat test by Mosaic, it used to be Great Plains Lab, they measure oxalic acid in the urine, which sounds like what you had done. And so um, you really want to look at what your vitamin D is, um, and that will help us know as well. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that I don't think that giving calcium causes calcium oxalate. Let me see really quick. Um, let's see here. Yeah, so the most common type of kidney stone, 70 to 80% are calcium oxalate stones produced by the liver and also absorbed from your diet. Also made, um, so high doses of vitamin D, make sure your vitamin D isn't too high. Hyper vitamin D doses can do it. Um, high vitamin C can do it too. Um, and um, 
several metabolic disorders can increase the concentration of calcium and oxalate in your urine, but I really want you to look and make sure there's nothing in your home. Honestly, I really do. Um, let's see here. Let me scroll up. I think this is fascinating. Thank you. I'm about to meet a friend, um, meditating coach to talk about this because I think there's so much power meditation. Absolutely. You really can. He proved through science that you can collapse the time space function as you have to have the feelings of how it would feel if you have what you already want whether that's love or money or whatever you want, health, um, you have to already know what that feels like. If it, it's, That's what brings it to you is the feeling of elation and then the feeling of stillness when the mind is still where you're a zero point with your brain and you're in like theta waves, um, gamma and theta waves, then you're able to collapse the time space function and manifest it to you through elated emotion of what it would feel like to already have it. It's really cool. And he proves it through science. Okay. My ferritin is 31.8. My iron 85. My iron binding is 68%. Saturation is 23. Oh, wow. She broke it all out. Um, your iron is actually not bad. It's, I mean, it's on the low end of normal like mine, but it's not bad. Um, saturation is pretty low. Your ferritin, what's the reference range on that? That looks pretty low to me. Like your, your iron storage is slightly low, right? So, um, but the iron is okay. You know, and the hemoglobin being low, it may not be connected as much. That's interesting. Ferritin has been dropping. Okay, yeah. It, it, it's interesting. Usually the iron drops before the stores, but sometimes I do see this. Inflammation. If Actually, we'll go up here really quick. Let's see. Low ferritin. And it's going to say parasites, right? Iron panel. Oh, oh, no. What happened here? Okay, there we go. <laughs> Um, hmm. that's interesting. Ferritin. Okay. Why? <laughs> Sorry, guys. It's like timing out on me and I'm not really sure why. Um, hold on just a second. I'm going to download the presentation again and look on, try this again. Okay. Um, here we go. So an iron panel, low ferritin, iron deficiency, anemia, which we don't you know you don't have. Your iron is okay. Parasites are pathogens, which eat the iron. They definitely eat vitamin D and iron and B12. That's why I was concerned as well. Blood loss or malnutrition can also do it. Okay. Um, so that's a reason um, that things can happen as well for you. I would love to see like um, your transferrin as well, because your iron is, is really not terrible, honestly. Okay, let's see here. Um, my vitamin D is 74, Jasmine, that's amazing. It's not too high, that's actually pretty ideal. That's not too high, it shouldn't be a problem so much. Okay, so Sherry says normal white blood cell count. I can't get mine above three. What could cause it to be so low? So chronic infections can do that. Viral infections, parasitic infections can cause, your body's kind of constantly fighting something, which is draining the, the strength of your white blood cells. Um, so that's that's one reason that um, you may have chronic, um, chronically low um, white blood cells, but everyone's a little bit, a little bit different. Um, I would love to know, like, on your differential, which one of your um, white blood cells is low? Is it neutrophils? Is it lymphocytes? That would give me a lot of clues. Um, me, let's see. Mitra says, what blood work testing do you recommend for depression and ADHD? So we have um, a blood spot test um, that you just prick your finger and do it. It's called the Neural Zoomer. I actually just did it and got it back. And it did show Epstein-Barr in my brain and CMV. Um, so that also could be contributing to why I had like neuropsychiatric effects so easily when my B12 was drained, right? There are certain other things in your toxin bucket which all relate to each other, right? So so um, I would say the neural zoomer from Vibrant is the test I would go for if you're ha suffering from any sort of like neuropsychiatric stuff, right? And you also want to just check like a CBC and a CMP, just to, like a cheap little blood panel to make sure you're not missing something like I did, right? Okay. Um, let's see. 
Jolene, what is the range for alkaline phosphatase? I'm typically in the 40s. So it depends on the lab, okay? Each lab has a little bit of a different um, range for people, but in general, I think, I believe 40 to 60 is normal. Let me look here. And it's gonna, remember, it's gonna not be exact for everything. Um, alkaline phosphatase, yeah, 44 to 147. For, is that what you asked? Hold on just a second. Uh, yeah, alkaline phosphatase, you're typically in the 40s. So Rupa's was very different for me. For alkaline phosphatase for me, it was optimal is 48 to um, 51. So it's very different for whatever lab you're using, right? Okay. Um, I didn't have ca calcium oxalates until I started calcium supplements. Okay, yeah. Back off the calcium supplements and make sure, make sure you stay hydrated for sure. Marissa, do you recommend B vitamin injections? I have to have a cracked tongue for years, so really working on improving this. Remember, that's not the only reason for a cracked tongue, spleen deficiency or spleen deficiency yin, which or yang or all that stuff can cause different cracks in the tongue. So there's many different reasons for that. So don't jump to conclusions yet if you're not having symptoms or your blood work doesn't show it. But yeah, I mean, if you're having trouble, any sort of absorption or you have a severe longstanding deficiency like what my blood work showed, then yeah, I would say to go get an injection because it does bypass the gut barrier and absorption and works at rel relatively quickly that way for you. And like, you guys deserve to feel better just like I do. Right. Um, let's see what causes non-renal epithelial cells greater than 10 on your analysis. So I, I don't know if anyone can tell you the answer to that because non-renal epithelial cells are, they're just like the um, skin cells or what epithelial cells are. And that could be really from anywhere. That could be from contamination from someone who did the urinalysis on you, honestly. Could be from anything. Um, let's see. Jasmine, is there a connection between ketones in the blood and high hemoglobin A1C? Absolutely. Um, that looks more like a diabetic presentation. So high hemoglobin A1C is a three month, three month average of your blood sugars. And we really want that less than 5.5, 5.6, depending on the lab. And you know, um, the lower, the better, right? Unless you're completely hypoglycemic. But um, for sure, if you're spilling urine, if spilling ketones in the urine, that usually means high blood sugar that's spilling into the urine. And especially if a high hemoglobin A1C is, is, is there as well, that would be pretty diagnostic for a diabetic problem at that point. Yeah. Um, oh, Janet, what were you saying that B vitamin affects the menstrual cycle on FSH and L? Yes, it does. Um, so you need it to make neurotransmitters and hormones. So I can actually tell my skin is getting better. Um, I'm actually, um, I can tell my cycles and I'm detoxing better. I don't get headaches as much anymore. I can go to hot yoga and not leave with a headache. Um, my, my, I guess I didn't know I had brain fog, but I feel like I could focus better now. I, my vision is better and it's well known that you need B vitamins for methylation and DNA synthesis for hormones and for, um, egg follicular egg maturation as well. Okay. What would you look into for general anxiety disorder? Any specific tests or vitamin deficiencies to look into? Absolutely. So B vitamins are a big one. So you need B, B, B5 and B6 to really make a lot of hormone production. Those are the big ones. Um, you need this for B1. You need everything for so blood sugar regulation. You're needed for B vitamins. There's so many things. And so I would say um, for generalized anxiety, make sure you get a B12, a urine MMA, a folate level, and just a CBC, CMP. I would just look into that. Um, I would also look into diet and food sensitivity tests. Sometimes food sensitivities and allergies can cause a lot of anxiety too. Excuse me, trauma in general and being stuck in a flight or fight in nervous system dysregulation as well can do it. Um, and then a lack of magnesium, right? I also started taking magnesium three and eight at night. And the reason I chose three and eight is because um, of its availability to cross the blood brain barrier and be able to um, really help in cognition and calm people down. So that's another good option for you. Um, perfect. What can cause high ketones in your analysis of my glucose and A1C are normal? It's usually fasting. 
usually fasting. Yep. I'm chronically low in magnesium on blood tests. Supplementation doesn't help in blood tests accurate for measuring magnesium. It is not accurate. So only about 2 to 5% of the magnesium are out in the serum in the blood. The rest are inside the cell. So you need a, um, oh, what's it called? It's a specific magnesium test. Um, magnesium um, test to look inside the cell. And it's just, I can't think right now. Um, Cellular magnesium homeostasis, 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 excuse me, can't talk. Yeah, RBC magnesium, thank you. So you guys want to look at it, RBC mag, that's going to look at the magnesium inside the cell. That's about 90, 95% of the magnesium. And so that's going to really help you know whether you're, you're deficient in magnesium. Because if you look at 5% of the body's supply, you still might be deficient, but you're not looking at a full enough supply to really know what your levels are, right? So that's what I would suggest. Um, okay, let's see here. I'm just kind of scrolling up, you guys. So neutrophils, alta 44, lymphocytes, 43, whoops. Put some basic white blood cells three which one of those are low on the reference ranges sherry it doesn't really help me to do numbers without reference ranges so can you tell me which ones are low because I, I don't know where your lab was done what do you think about emdr and somatic therapy i love it i think somatic therapy is a little bit more efficacious but i've done emdr personally recently and um really got a lot of benefit from it i thought it was amazing to help especially if you have like specific traumatic events that you remember and you can't um like process to yourself, right? And sometimes it takes a while to understand that about ourselves, you know, um, for sure. Can we trust blood tests for calcium measurement? Yes. That's pretty accurate. Yes, absolutely. HTMA too. Yes, absolutely. That's another way to look at magnesium. <laughs> yes, guys. So, so hopefully that's helpful. You guys, um, just wanted to show you how if you get blood work and it's skewed, don't freak out because in less than a month you can change it, right? The original labs I had done again on November 8th, the last ones that I had done that were mostly corrected was November 27th and I had a vitamin ID on November 23rd. Okay. So I would suggest you guys, if you have the availability and are privileged enough to be able to get a vitamin IV, you can do that once a month. Um, or a B, just a B vitamin injection is much more affordable as well. Even a vitamin D injection, if you're low in vitamin D, sometimes getting the injections jumpstart the body and then taking them orally really works. It just gets the body back in normalcy out of inflammation so that it can start to kind of absorb minerals and vitamins again. Where can I find a concise list of functional ranges for each blood parameter? I believe, yes, yes. This is what you take my courses for. So in my hour and a half blood work course, which this is not the course, this is just the downloadable information. You can see there are functional ranges here, right? On all of them. And not only do I go over like thyroid, iron panel, inflammation, immunoglobulin, and then how to read HLA genotypes, you guys. So, right. So it's all that. Um, and if you go here, you can see the actual course, right? So, um, this is what wellness plus kind of looks like if you ever wanted to watch the course, right? Um, it's again, hi everyone. Welcome back. I'm Dr. Jess. And today I want to talk to you about a subject you guys asked for, and I'm really excited to go in depth with you about it. Um, it's how to read lab work. So that's, that's the course, you guys. And as you can see, there's a ton of courses, right? Um, and some of these probably will be really interesting to you guys. Um, this is if you get stuck. This is a lot about root canals and mercury fillings and being stuck in flight or fight. But how to read lab, how to read the Dutch, how to read the oat test. You know, we have a ton of different stuff. How to read iridology, a lot about emotional mastery, mastery, holistic preconception protocols for fertility, long haulers, and all of this stuff, right? And we have different protocols, hand holding that I've picked out myself. So um, we hope that you guys will come over to Wellness Plus and join us over there so I can help you out more. 
Um, we have a lot of handholding in community forum where we answer questions over there. I hope that you guys got a lot of benefit out of this um, and that it helped you some. I really hope that you guys kind of saw um, a different perspective in blood work and how you can change it and be empowered and understand it and use reference ranges to kind of be your own best doctor, if you will, right? Um, let's see. Let me see some of your guys' questions here. Um, should I be worried about it? a GFR of 82? No, that's actually not too bad. You're okay. That's just your glomerular filtration rate. So how quickly um, things are filtered through the glomerulus and the kidneys every minute. Um, neutrophil is low. Okay, so that's helpful. Thank you. So they are 44.9 lymphocytes. Um, 17 to 43 and they're 43 point. So you have some sort of chronic bacterial infection. I would definitely think about a Lyme panel just, you know, or some sort of, you know, gut zoom or something like that to kind of look around and see there's something sort of draining your energy and your ability of your white blood cells to fight back. And it looks like there might be a bacteria and sort of a virus kind of piggybacking being frenemies together. So I hope you guys liked it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm really glad you guys are here. I appreciate you so much. Um, if you guys want to join up on Wellness Plus, you can save $15 just by putting in the promo code SAVE15. So when you sign up and you have to pick your bronze, silver, gold package, depending on what your needs are, don't forget to enter SAVE15, S-A-V-E 15, into the promo code so that you can save $15 with us and see if you like our platform. Um, and then dig it, kind of hang out with us. So I'm going to have open office hours coming next week where I'm going to hop on Zoom. I'm going to be able to see your face. And we're going to get jump on there and um, actually have open office hours where you guys can just triage questions with with me and I'm going to be on there for two hours with you guys. So that's a new plus perk of Wellness Plus. So you'll get to have me answering questions with you quite frequently. So thank you guys so much. Save 15 in your promo code. Hope to see you in Wellness Plus. Thanks for joining. Hip hip hooray about labs, guys. Bye. Have a great evening.